Hi guys, I'm Big Mike, and like always, I'd like to thank you for being here today. Today we've got Ryan from Kinetic and Ninja Trader here to talk to you about how to get news and data uh, options from Kinetic into Ninja Trader. So he's going to cover uh, topics including how to get started, what data is free as a Ninja customer, and what markets and services are covered by uh, Kinetic. There's also going to be a Q&A, so at any time if you guys have questions uh, about anything being discussed or just anything in general regarding Kinetic, then uh, type them into the questions box and Ryan will do his best to answer everybody's question. Uh, as always, the recording for the webinar will be posted on BMT sometime tomorrow. Uh, you can click the webinars button at the top of any page and you'll see it sometime tomorrow. Uh, just follow the thread for updates. And give me one second, guys, and I will turn things over to Ryan. Hang on one second. All right, everyone. Make sure uh, everyone can see my screen here and also hear my voice. You can uh, let me know. But uh, I do like to keep these events interactive, so any questions you do have, go ahead and put those in the room at any time. So looking good, uh, everyone there. So what we're going to go ahead and do is, for me personally, I like to give a broad overview of what Kinetic does. Um, before we get started with that, I would like to thank Big Mike here for enabling me to uh, present in his room and also discuss these these features of Kinetic and what is essentially they can do for you if you're using NinjaTrader. So for me, I go over those aspects and then I work within NinjaTrader so you can see those in real time. And uh, to, to get started though, uh, let's talk about the, uh, the features of Kinetic and what we'll do here with those features is, and excuse me, what we'll go ahead and do is with our slideshow, uh, talk about the introduction, what exactly Kinetic is, the advantage thereof, and then we'll conclude it with the pricing options. We'll cover that at the very end here today. I'll show you a quick sign up, how to go through that process uh, as well on the Kinetic page as well as within the context of this, uh, this presentation here as well. One of the things uh, that's really interesting to me though is the nature of trading and the necessity for speed and things like I come across in my reading generally and it's just interesting things and I like to want to highlight that so specifically back in uh, 2010 they actually completed a new fiber optic cable that went from uh, Chicago to New York uh, the essential goal of this was to eliminate distance in terms of the route and the goal was to save three milliseconds and they did this at an extraordinarily large cost to be able to do this. They had to drill through mountains in Pennsylvania to be able to complete this. And the goal there was to eliminate speed, uh, excuse me, was to uh, provide a faster route and eliminate uh, time between the transition points, thus making your trades get from one place to another faster. And these are institutional level investors, but you can get those same advantages with the kinetic data feed. Uh, and right now they're actually building a transatlantic cable that goes from London to New York with the same goal. And the goal here is to ultimately save about uh, 5.2 milliseconds. So we're talking minimal, minimal amounts of time. And the cost for this one was $300 million. A, a massive amount uh, for the investment for the, the amount of time. And you can see where the markets are, are going in terms of being able to provide this speed. And that's filtering down to you guys in terms of the kinetic data and how that data is provided to you. And w the way that works with the kinetic feed uh, specifically is uh, how we to decide to provide the data uh, from our servers. And the result for you when you're live trading and using Kinetic as a supplementary feed here is the reliability and the stability of the feed itself. And what that means is that the servers that we, we run the data, we have a, a quad redundant Tigger data farm where the data is coming directly from the exchange, it's professionally managed, and the redundancy of these exchanges means that there's never any downtime with the Kinetic feed and you're getting full data from the exchange. 
And then with Kinetic specifically, it's been optimized for NinjaTrader 7. And what that means is there's no technological barriers between the application and the data that's coming from the Kinetic servers. A lot of times you'll have uh, what's known as an API or programming interface uh, that is interjected between the technology, whether it's your charting software, and then the exchange. With the optimization for NinjaTrader, that's been eliminated. It's directly provided into the NinjaTrader application. That adds speed as well, going back to uh, the benefit of Kinetic in that sense. And what is also great about the Kinetic feed is for the NinjaTrader application, there's support for futures trading, forex trading, as well as um, indexes and equities. And uh, with that futures trading, you have access to a large number of domestic and international markets, uh, whether it's the CME, and you, we'll talk a little bit more about the CME exchanges in particular as it relates to the uh, waiver program that's available with Kinetic there as well. And uh, that includes as well as the international markets like the Eurex, uh, just added the Sydney Futures Exchange. Uh, Singapore is another really commonly requested one uh, for um, particular contracts as well. And those are all available. And then you have a, a large number of Forex markets. And the Forex data is provided by either FXCM or 104. And that data enables you to access composite symbols as well as regional banks, as well as the uh, data directly from FXCM. So you have a lot of choice in accessing the Forex market, a decentralized market in that sense, and you're able to uh, get individual spread rates based on whichever provider you elect to go with that's available with Kinetic. And this also applies to equities data that's available. Again, it's mostly domestic ex uh, as well as uh, Canadian exchanges for equities data. And then there's a large number of indices that are available. And this applies equally to market metrics. And we'll talk a little bit about those. I have a really good example I'll show you a little bit later. Um, but all of this data comes from Kinetic. It's then fed into the NinjaTrader application. Going back to the optimization of it, what that essentially does is it eliminates that technological barrier and you essentially are getting the data direct into the NinjaTrader application, adding to that speed factor. The other great thing about uh, this data and the the what you're getting with it is it's true tick by tick data. Uh, using a numeric example, example here, what you're looking at is unfiltered versus filtered data. So believe it or not, a lot of uh, data providers will choose to filter their data. Uh, our, our main focus is on providing a true snapshot of what's going on at the market, and that's by providing you true tick by tick data. With that, uh, you can see in this numeric sequence uh, an example of unfiltered versus filtered. But a better example here is if we look at a range uh, 100 tick chart, and uh, each bar represents 100 different ticks direct from the exchange. This is an unfiltered chart, and you compare that to a filtered chart, and what you see is there are far more bars on the unfiltered versus the filtered. So even though each bar here represents 100 different ticks, what you are uh, actually seeing is far fewer bars generated with the filtered data indicating a fewer number of ticks. This is especially important if you use like bid-ask studies or you're looking to generate range charts within NinjaTrader volume charts, things of that sort. And so it's why with Kinetic we've chosen to offer completely unfiltered data uh, with the feed itself. Uh, and that also applies to the historical data that's available. And the historical data that's available is the uh, for range charts, volume charts, uh, as well as tick-based second charts that are available within NinjaTrader. We have 120 days worth of tick data, which is far more than most providers are going to offer you, uh, specifically for the generation of uh, historical backfilling on your charts. So you don't have to be connected at all times. You can and just create a chart within NinjaTrader and the historical data will populate from the Kinetic servers. Uh, and this also applies to minute data. There's at a minimum two years worth of minute data. But for commonly traded exchanges, there's far more. And uh, so this is just a baseline. But for things like the E-mini, S&P, things of that sort, uh, you have up to five years. And I believe lack of last checking with the uh, E-mini, S&P, uh, there's about seven years worth of minute data for your generation of minute charts there within NinjaTrader. And then also 10 years worth of daily data. 
And again, this is a baseline as well. And so for more commonly traded uh, symbols, you're going to have more extensive historical data. That E-mini S&P contract, uh, I've seen it go back about um, 15 years or so. A uh, fun little fact is the Dow Jones Industrial Average with the daily data that's available goes back to about 1928. So you can see it uh, over time there. That's, uh, that's an interesting chart to look at. Uh, if you get the moment to uh, go ahead and create it. But the best part about this daily data is it's also available for the free end of day fee that's preloaded in NinjaTrader. And this historical data is actually included with the basic service. So for the basic service cost of $50 per month, and we'll talk about the pricing of uh, Kinetic a little bit more, all this historical data for every single market that's covered, and that in entails about 50,000 uh, total instruments what you're able to get is access to all of this historical data. And the other thing that you get with that basic service as well is access to a large number of market metrics. So that includes things like your tick, your trend, put and call ratios. And these break down to various uh, segments of the market. And so uh, the tick index generally refers to the New York Stock Exchange tick. But there's also ones for the NASDAQ composite as well as trends for the NASDAQ composite as well as the NYSE and these break down uh, to about 500 total included with every single subscription to the basic service and uh, best part about these is they all update in every single second so they're essentially real-time uh, indicators that you can use and a lot of people will use these for confirmation signals uh, based on their based on uh, which symbols or which markets they're trading. Uh, give you an example of why this may be important for the update interval is I got a chart here with three different market metrics applied. We have the net issues as it calculates based on kinetics interval one second here. And then uh, we have a 10 second. Some providers provide a, uh, a more uh, a larger frame for update. And then just the NASDAQ composite index. So the NASDAQ composite index is the actual value that updates from the exchange. And what you can see on this is a gap from one level to the next. And there's not really any leading uh, understanding of why that may have occurred. It just kind of happened from one update to the next. Whereas if we were comparing that with the net issues, which is a measure of the advancing versus the declining issues of this particular exchange, the NASDAQ. Um, what we see is actually a gradual decline in the overall net issues. So either the advancers are uh, being reduced or the decliners are increasing, uh, picking up momentum, thus changing the ratio uh, down that we see this gradual decrease. And so if we're looking at the net issues, we can kind of see, um, even for the NASDAQ index itself updates, where these net issues are going and where the market itself may be headed. And a lot of people, again, will use these as confirmation signals uh, to go with their particular trading. And so even if you're subscribing to Kinetic for just the historical data, you get these market metrics as well. And you can start incorporating them uh, into your trading if you're not familiar with them. Uh, and compare that to the net issues, 10 second. And what you see is a drop here as well. But you don't get that same sense of decline uh, that you really do as well with the, with the uh, net issues, one second there. And again, all these market metrics come with the basic service. Uh, it's a great feature of the basic service of Kinetic. Now, the other thing is it, with, uh, with Kinetic, it's a supplementary feed. So if you're trading with NinjaTrader, uh, you do have to connect to a brokerage data feed. And this is something we'll cover when we go over the application. And uh, so let's say you're a futures trader, uh, which is what a lot of people use NinjaTrader for primarily, but you are holding longer term positions in stocks. You know, you can access the historical data as a supplement to whatever your future broker offers uh, as, as well by getting all that historical data that comes from all those major exchanges, the NYSE, the NASDAQ uh, as well. Uh, and then also the Forex data. And so all of this data is going to be included uh, when it's a supplement to your brokerage data. And then uh, all these, these market metrics here as well. Now, a big thing uh, with the Kinetic feed is the news sources. And you have access to include with the basic service news data from RTT News, PR Newswire, as well as Business Wire. And what that enables you to do is there's a feature within NinjaTrader, which we'll actually spend a lot of time working on, uh, that uh, you can take these news articles as they're generated by these feeds, and you can filter them based on uh, particulars of your trading. So if you're looking for like non-farm payroll or something like that, you can create a filter, and then you can get it alerted based on when you get that news. Uh, and there's also premium news services that are going to be available that you can subscribe to. 
uh, when signing up, but you do get data from the uh, RTT News, PR Newswire, as well as Business Wire uh, directly included with that basic service. And then the other thing is is the cost effectiveness. So if you're already using NinjaTrader, um, there's no better priced data feed uh, for what you get in terms of the, the feed. That starts off with that free end of day connection. Uh, you can download NinjaTrader for free and then you can just connect to the end of day connection that's preloaded in the application. And you can access all of that 10 years worth of historical data for all the symbols that are supported uh, with Kinetic, again 50,000 in total. And, and that's all included uh, with just that free download of NinjaTrader, but then you also have the ability of getting $304 worth of market data fees waived. So what we've talked about so far in terms of the news uh, and how the pricing structure works is uh, the market metrics, the historical data, the news fees, all of that's included with your basic service cost. That basic service cost uh, is $50 per month, but then real-time data is added on top of that based on uh, what the exchanges have. And uh, one of the uh, tremendous benefits of the kinetic feed is if you're able to qualify you can get three hundred and four dollars worth of market data fees waived and the market data fees that you can get waived are from the CME exchange uh, the CBOT the NYMEX as well as the COMEX exchange uh, so a lot of those really commonly used uh, futures contracts like the e-mini S&P the, the e-mini NASDAQ uh, the crude oil your gold your silver all of those are going to be included with this uh, fee waiver program which we'll, I'll cover how to uh, sign up for uh, at the very end here when we're going over uh, the purchase page. Uh, all of that can be included uh, when you just subscribe to the Kinetic Basic Service. And uh, again, those real-time subscriptions, they do start at just $50 per month, and they include everything here, uh, the 500 market metrics, as well as the thousands of indexes, and then that delayed and historical data for all the instruments not supported. So if you're just looking to get started, you know, maybe don't have a broker yet with NinjaTrader, you can get delayed data, and you can uh, simulate trade based off delayed data, and that's something that uh, you see commonly uh, there as well. And uh, just looking at this, I do see uh, a few questions in the room. Uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and move over to the NinjaTrader application. Uh, not to forget the, the three news sources there. Um, but uh, we're going to go ahead and move over to the uh, NinjaTrader application here and talk a little bit about what you can do in terms of connecting with the kinetic feed and what's uh, what's available here as well. And the question is, what's the criteria to get the data fees waived? Um, the criteria there, David, would be based on your ability to live trade. So you would need to be able to, when you're using NinjaTrader, uh, you would need to be trading live with a supported broker. Um, keeping in mind that Kinetic is a supplementary feed to whatever um, broker that you are trading within, within NinjaTrader, you would be able to uh, qualify based on a supported futures broker and NinjaTrader works with hundreds of them and then also uh, the ability to trade live is based on uh, having a live license and that's available to you in uh, a lot of different a lot of different ways in there um, in terms of the the kinetic uh, data here and then also another question here from Mike I'm very interested in using kinetic data feed into NinjaTrader. However, is there an option to use live data feed on a trial basis for a short time without market data fees? Um, in terms of uh, what we offer, Mike, with uh, trial data, the end of day is a great place to get started. But if you send uh, me personally an email to support at kinetic.com, uh, I'd be more than happy to work with you in being able to provide a trial. We don't have uh, extended trials like maybe some other providers do, but we do offer um, some some short term trials if uh, if that's what you're looking for. Um, now the basic service includes forex. The basic service is going to include uh, is going to include historical data for the forex. But in addition to if you're looking to get real time data, it would be twenty five dollars in addition to the basic service. Um, so that would be that real time data. The twenty five dollars being for the basic forex. That would be for data from FXCM. But there's also an institutional premium forex which adds data from ten four. Uh, so you'd be looking at a total of about uh, fifty, uh, either fifty seventy five or a hundred dollars uh, per month. Whether you go with just the basic service for the historical data, uh, whether you go with the basic forex for the real-time from FXCM at 75 or if you go with the real-time premium Forex at $50 per month, you're looking at um, either of those price levels. Again, the basic Forex does include all of your historical data there. 
uh, for all of those symbols as well. So uh, everyone, uh, Mike, Mike, David, and Avi, thanks for those questions. I encourage everyone to uh, keep them rolling. And here we go, Big Mouth Buster. Why is it that we can't trade in sim mode uh, when using Kinetic? Um, just to clarify, you absolutely can. Uh, it's just you wouldn't qualify for the CME waiver program at that particular time. So you can subscribe to the Kinetic data. Um, since it's a data-only provider, you're able to access real-time data direct from the exchanges and use the free version of NinjaTrader. Um, it's just that CME waiver program that would be dependent on uh, the qualified live trading. Uh, so you don't necessarily need to qualify for the waiver program, but the benefit to you is you can ultimately save $304 worth of market data fees uh, there as well. And so, uh, yeah, absolutely, that is possible there. So uh, thanks for that question, Buster. All right, so everyone should be able to see uh, NinjaTrader at this point uh, in terms of the application here. And right now what we're going to go ahead and do is just kind of show you what's available uh, to you as part of the end of day feed. So you can first go from within NinjaTrader to File, you can go to Connect, and then you can select your Kinetic end of day feed. And uh, when you do connect to the kinetic end of day feed, it just shows is connected in the bottom left in NinjaTrader. And from here on out, uh, what we can do is, uh, since this is just daily historical data, it mostly pertains to to uh, charting features that are available within NinjaTrader. And so you can go to File, you can select New, and then you can select Chart. And once you've selected chart, uh, you get the data series window here uh, within the application. Here's where you would define the symbol that you wish to view. There's some predefined instrument lists there um, that you can uh, you can use the search feature here. Let's just grab uh, the ES contract here again because that's a really commonly traded one that uh, has a lot of volume on it specifically. And just by double clicking from these predefined lists, you go ahead and are able to you're able to uh, go ahead and see that it's added in the bottom left and now you have the ability to edit the properties. Uh, the big properties here when using this end of day feed is you want to make sure that your period type is daily and uh, or weekly, monthly, or yearly, but it's based on uh, it's based on a chart interval that's based on this historical daily data. You can specify the number of days that an individual bar represents. Uh, the other important aspect is the number of days to load. Keeping in mind that at a minimum there's 10 years worth of data, you can go back much farther than the 365 that's specified. You can change that to a custom range, and we can uh, load this data back to say 2007, go back five years, and then uh, the rest of these are just charting features that um, mostly affect the visual display of it. We'll go ahead and right now go ahead and create this chart. Result is is that we get a quickly generated uh, daily chart and you can see the optimization there in terms of pulling that historical data. I did so uh, extraordinarily quickly and right now because we're connected to the end of day feed what we can see is if we push down on the middle mouse click with NinjaTrader uh, we can actually see the data from today has updated and this represents the current data uh, that's traded here 8.15.2 2012, but you see the historical data going back uh, within our charts. Now, interesting thing here is within NinjaTrader, if we scroll back in time, you'll notice that we get fewer ticks generated than uh, what we would see if we were looking at a, uh, a contract like, say, uh, Apple or something like that. Uh, what we see this has to do with the, this is data just for the ES0912. Uh, and so uh, Kinetic also offers what's known as a continuous contract. Continuous contract being the automatic merging of historical data into the current front month. And the way you can view that data within NinjaTrader is by typing just directly on the chart when it's the active window and then uh, specifying the pound sign for your, for your front month value and once we hit enter here what we'll go ahead and do is create a new chart. You see the daily bar here represents 8-15-2012 as it did previously. The values here are the same because the current front month is the same but we can scroll back in time a little bit more and you see we have access to all of that historical data. So rather than just viewing the ES0912 data we're viewing the previous front months automatically merged into the 
and current for a month, and this data is back adjusted. Um, in, in terms of the end of day feed, I don't, uh, I don't believe it's back adjusted automatically, but if you were to subscribe to Kinetic, one of your options is to automatically back adjust the data, and so you can back adjust it or you cannot back adjust uh, this continuous contract data depending on your preferences and your needs. Maybe uh, you're doing some historical back testing, you don't want to back adjust it. Uh, you can make that distinction within the connection itself. And then looking at the ES data, you do have access again to a large number of symbols. The number of symbols being uh, representing the equities as well, and so you can quickly change to any thing, Apple being a really commonly traded uh, equity here, we can just type in the Apple symbol and bring up the historical data for that. Scrolling back in time, you can see where we ultimately are loading five years worth of data. If we scroll all the way back, you can see uh, the, the variance and the uh, just immense growth that this, uh, this particular stock has undergone here uh, going back all the way to 2007 uh, and again this goes back farther than that 10 years worth and in case like Apple you you'd probably see some uh, more extensive historical data uh, specifically um, for this month and it, that typically applies to uh, the more commonly traded exchanges and so any symbol that's on those exchanges provided it's been trading that long you would be able to access the uh, data that's available from it and we can go back to the, the current bar by hitting that arrow in the top right. This applies to Forex data here as well, Euro USD. Uh, we can just type in that symbol and you see the, uh, the exchange rate here, uh, the Forex pair for the Euro US dollar here. And, uh, and, so, and then also market metrics. Uh, the way you can view those is using the shift key here. Uh, within NinjaTrader, I'm going to go ahead and put in an up carrot, and that up carrot tells NinjaTrader we're loading a market metric. Uh, so if we want, we can take a look at the daily tick uh, for the NYSC here, and you can see this is just a uh, measure, and overall it looks like it was a fairly uh, positive day in terms of the, uh, the, the number of advancing versus declining issues as it relates to the net to the uh, to the NYSC, but you have other index values that are available here. If I want to view the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average, I can view that there as well. Uh, we can see that it was up um, based on the color of the bar there as well. And so you have access to all of these uh, with this end of day data. And again, the, the end of day historical data pertains mostly uh, to the charting features within NinjaTrader. And once we connect here to a real time feed, we'll go over some of the other features that you have uh, within the NinjaTrader application and how the kinetic data that you're getting uh, can benefit you in that respect. But right now I want to take uh, some, some time here to go ahead and answer uh, a large number of questions I saw um, by, by uh, first off from Fernando, is kinetic powered by DTN? That's a great question. Uh, Kinetic and uh, D uh, IQ feed do share underlying technology from uh, from Televent and the servers. Uh, in that respect, its uh, difference being that Kinetic's optimized for NinjaTrader 7. Um, that also uh, is, enables us to provide data specifically for NinjaTrader 7 at a lower cost than you would be able to get IQ feed uh, with any application. Uh, so thanks for that question. And uh, Aslam, I have just got the lifetime and kinetic. How do I download uh, more than three days of data? Um, Aslam, what you're, uh, I believe, running into is a uh, limit that in terms of the charting. So what you can do within your charting is right click uh, and select data series. If you're going to load a, uh, a chart here, and I'll talk about this here in a, a little bit as well when we're working with range charts and things once we connect the real time. Uh, what, if you were to select a tick interval, uh, you would be automatically defaulted to three days worth of data. You do have access to that 120 days worth. Uh, you just need to specify that, uh, that number there. So we can put the number of days in here and then you can load 120 days worth. I'm not going to load that much because I can't take a bit of time. One of the other things is to increase bandwidth during regular trading hours. We do limit it to eight days worth of data that can be loaded during regular trading hours. Um, but right now, since we're outside those regular trading hours, uh, if you specify 120 days worth as the number of uh, days for your tick bars to go ahead and download, uh, you'll be able to pull that direct from the servers at this point. Uh, as well. uh, Oh, okay, and uh, Buster, thanks for that question. Uh, I meant uh, we can't place uh, SIM uh, SIM uh, trade if we're connected to our um, broker. And yeah, because this is just historical data, uh, because this is just historical data, 
it's not going to work uh, ideally for the uh, placement of a simulation uh, trades. What you may want to consider for that is the uh, NinjaTrader simulated data feed, or there's also trials that are available, uh, either through Kinetic or uh, other data providers uh, that work with brokerage feeds and that can uh, give you that real-time data for for being able to uh, to place simulated trades. Otherwise, a subscription uh, to the Kinetic Basic Service is going to give you that because you're going to have access to delayed data. So whether it's uh, real-time data, the the data itself functions in a stream. That way, you can uh, place your place your simulated trades, but the historical end of day feed uh, isn't really designed for the uh, placement of simulation trades there uh, specifically, and that's something that more is covered with the simulated feed or uh, just by subscribing to the Kinetic uh, basic service there. And uh, as and when it changes for more days, it takes a long time to download. Um, that can be the case, depending on the, uh, the amount of days. Uh, you know, you're pulling a, a large amount of data, 120 days worth of tick data, uh, each bar uh, each, depending on the symbol, there there may be millions of data points that are having to be pulled and transmitted uh, to it. And so uh, you'll see here in a moment when we work with it, it does take a little bit longer to load uh, charts that are range-based, uh, especially if you're going to be loading in a, a, the, the full extent of the data. But once that data is loaded for the first time, it is cached in NinjaTrader and it makes it a uh, more seamless process in terms of loading it um, there. And Javi, what methods of payment are available for Kinetic? And uh, Javi, this is what we'll uh, we'll talk about this in terms of the uh, purchase options a little bit more. Uh, but when you sign up with Kinetic, it's billed monthly, and the billing is based on a credit card that you provide when signing up. Um, that credit card is processed automatically at the beginning of each month, uh, and because it's billed monthly, you do also have the benefit of being able to cancel at any time. So, um, Buster, if you're looking at simulated trading and you just want to subscribe to Kinetic Data, you can do so. But then, if you get with brokerage data, uh, you can uh, cancel the kinetic feed at any time uh, and do it that way. But what you, uh, what I think you find is if you go about and subscribe to kinetic data, is you want to keep that data just based on the extent of historical and the other aspects of the data that would enable you to uh, supplement whatever data you may get for uh, your live trading there as well. And Raymond, uh, does your historical tick data backfill uh, the GOMI indicators? The historical, there is historical bid and ask data available with the uh, kinetic feed, uh, but as far as I'm aware, um, there's not a feature within NinjaTrader that enables historical backfilling of the data. So even though Kinetic offers historical bid and ask data, it wouldn't update those uh, bid ask indicators uh, like that GOMI like that GOMI set, but the kinetic data uh, is, is an ideal solution for real-time uh, data in terms of using those bid-ask studies. And uh, as I'm saying, he uses mostly a 15-minute chart here. And so um, that's actually a good segue into the kinetic data feed intraday. So what we'll go ahead and do is uh, go to File, we'll go to Disconnect, and uh, select the end of day feed. Once we're disconnected, I'm going to go ahead and connect to my kinetic feed here. And you'll see now I'm connected to real-time data. And I'm viewing the Dow Jones Industrial Average daily. Uh, this only updates in real and uh, during the regular trading hours, so it's not an ideal chart to look at at the moment. What I can do though is I can uh, quickly change to the ES12 here. Uh, go ahead and select that, and you can see now that we're getting uh, real-time data uh, based on the current price. Uh, since we're also in after hours, one of the things we may want to do is go to right-click on uh, data series here. And uh, we may want to change the session template here with the Ninja Trader. We'll use the uh, CME US Index Futures ETH. So that'll show us our extended trading hours. And indeed, that is the case. Uh, we can do that. But also, with that session template, we can change the interval on this chart. So if we select, uh, say, 15 minutes here, uh, where, where we can change the symbol within NinjaTrader. We can also change the chart interval within NinjaTrader here uh, just by typing on the chart itself. And so in this case, if I want to switch to an intraday chart, specifically a 15-minute chart, uh, we can just type 15, M being the keyboard shortcut for uh, the uh, minute interval on NinjaTrader. We'll go ahead and select a minute here. And then you see the uh, loading of the bar where each bar represents 15 minutes worth of data. And right now you can see there's a line uh, at this bar 
at 14, 15. For me, local time, that's 2.15. Uh, what we see is the session break, and that's the distinction between the regular trading and the extended trading hours. So right now you can see the extended trading hours bars being generated. Uh, depending on which session template you use, there would be a distinction between where uh, that session line occurs, but this is predefined. There's a lot of predefined templates there within NinjaTrader uh, specifically as well. We can uh, change to Apple here and we can view that data and you can see here as well that we're getting that after market data uh, with this particular symbol here as well. Uh, not the same amount of volume that we have and the extended trading hours here as well uh, from the night before. It's not until about it's not until about 7.30 here that we start seeing uh, the the regular market hours and you kind of um, see that distinction here in overall value and again I'm uh, viewing all this data by pushing down on the middle mouse click uh, on my nin on my uh, mouse and that being the middle mouse button on uh, that scroll wheel and so that brings up what's uh, known as the mini data box and that just gives me quick values uh, I can see the time of this bar the open the high low close values that type of uh, information there as well and then also this pertains to uh, forex symbols we can do euro, euro USD uh, just to see where that's at the forex markets an interesting market because it's actually open 24 hours a day only closes on Friday uh, there and so we can see all of these bars and it's based on uh, my session templates here. Uh, if we right click and do data series, uh, what we want to make sure we do here is uh, we can select 4x as our template. Uh, and so when we change the symbols, we don't actually change the uh, we don't actually change the uh, the session template. And so you can see the the forex break line here at uh, three o'clock local time, five o'clock Eastern, uh, and then each day generates. Uh, 24 hours worth of forex trading and then also with Apple and then you have those market metrics here as well uh, if I wanted to view the tick index uh, on say a one minute I could do tick 1m and so I can change the interval as well as the symbol directly from the chart and we can see what's going on here uh, as well when looking at this data and um, what we want to do here is right click and do properties. Uh, we can change the session template to be US equities ETH uh, for extended trading hours and you can actually see that generate. Here's our extended trading hours 1400 but we're now getting uh, the uh, tick base bar and we can see uh, just the general trend of the, the extended trading hour session at this point. Uh, and so that's the aspects of the charting and the intraday data that you have but that also applies to tick based intervals we can go ahead and select, say, uh, for our tick-based intervals, if I want to pull up a range chart, uh, which is a really commonly used type of chart, uh, we can view uh, tick-based charts. Um, because this is a market metric, it's not an ideal chart, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the ES0912. And so because uh, this is calculated on every single second, uh, a full range chart just kind of shows me uh, a large number, a uh, movement of ticks. and so. Uh, Range-based charts wouldn't be ideal for this because the volume is going to be all the, always the same uh, and the number of ticks generated is going to be a set n number based on uh, every single second uh, because that is a market metric. But if we change that to the ES0912 here and load a full range chart, uh, you can see that the difference is we're going to right click and then select uh, our, our session template here again being uh, the CME US index futures ETH and you can see that what it does is it takes the individual ticks that are generated and because this is a range chart there's not any uh, necessity that each each bar just needs to fall within a specific range once it's outside that a new bar is generated so there's never uh, there's not any specific designation tying the range bars to the time axis um, what we see though in like really volatile markets is a large number of bars generated over an extreme extremely short period of time. Uh, looking back at my example from uh, the slideshow earlier comparing the filter versus the unfiltered data, you saw if you looked at the times, the uh, number of bars generated for that in the 100 tick chart. And you can kind of see that as well. If we were to switch this say to 100 tick, T being the NinjaTrader shortcut for tick values there uh, as well. And so if we, do, we see this, and what we would do is if we scroll back in time a little bit uh, during the regular market hours, uh, you can see these bars being generated and the, the time frame that it represents for just my display at this point is just about 30 minutes worth of data. Uh, and so you see just the immense number of data points that are generated when looking at this and when you think about the number of 
successful or the days that are available. And you're talking about a massive amount of data that's going to be extraordinarily useful for uh, anything that you want to do with it. Back testing is a good one. Um, Backfilling indicators, uh, with the exception of that previous question. Um, there as well uh, in terms of loading of historical bid and ask data uh, within NinjaTrader, but that real-time bid and ask data can be used absolutely in that sense. Uh, but this, the amount of historical data that's ultimately going to backfill uh, is just is just an immense resource for you uh, in terms of your trading. And uh, this real-time data also applies uh, to the other features of NinjaTrader. And so uh, to take a look at this, let's go to File, let's go to New, and then I'm going to pull up the uh, Static Superdome here. Um, but before we actually kind of delve into this and like the market depth features of the kinetic data, you have a couple of questions here. And uh, Chris Nolan is uh, clarifying most of those indicators are only programmed to run on all market data. Um, yeah, that's a that's a clarification um, as it relates to uh, Raymond's question to the historical uh, historical bid and ask data that's that's available. Um, if you send me a, a that at uh, support at kinetic.com. I can I can look into that a little bit more uh, for you specifically, Ray, uh, Raymond there, and then. Um, Hobby Kinetic works with the FXCM broker. Uh, seeing as FXCM was just added uh, as a supported broker of NinjaTrader, Kinetic being a supplementary feed for any of NinjaTrader supported brokers, absolutely. We'll talk about how you would connect Kinetic and multiple brokers here in just a moment uh, when we're working with the uh, multiple connections aspect of it. But since uh, FXCM is a supported broker, Kinetic uh, being the preferred data provider, you're able to connect to both of them at the same time, and it would work with any broker, FXCM included. And then as I'm, um, Ryan, how did you get the, the data display? Uh, and then uh, as I'm, that's something that uh, is done within the charting features. You can go to File, New, and Chart, and then just specify the symbol. Uh, that's something also here um, that I can work with you uh, directly on uh, as it relates to the to the feed. Uh, the main thing is to increase the number of days that you want to load, uh, which is a, a ninja trader charting feature on there as well. And that's accessible from a chart maybe you already have open right clicking and then just changing uh, the data based on uh, the number of days there as well. Uh, in terms of the real time data getting back to that, uh, what we can see here is what we can see here is the if we select just the ES, we see the real-time data as well as the market depth that's available. So this is real-time market depth data that's coming in. Uh, within the NinjaTrader Superdome, you have five levels of depth that are available. You see the last traded price as well as the number of contracts displayed uh, there in parentheses, the last traded price being the yellow field, the best bid, and the best ask um, being blue and green respectively. But then we also see the number of contracts residing at the price levels offset from that last traded price. Uh, one of the great things you can do with NinjaTrader is the for the ES in particular, more level two data is available direct from the exchange. I believe they go up to ten levels uh, specifically, and you can go to File, Connect. I'm um, sorry, you can go to New and then Level Two. And once you select Level Two here, one of the great things you can do as well is link these windows. And so, if I were to link the Level Two window with the Superdome, whenever I change the symbol in either one of these windows, what we see here is the full amount of level 2 data that's available with the kinetic feed. And that's the full amount of level 2 data that's coming from the exchange. And so whereas the dome only shows five levels, what we have is 10 levels. And up top, it's offset from the last traded price. We see that last traded price at 14.03.75. Uh, and then the number of contracts waiting to be filled at one tick offset, two tick offset, and so on. Uh, and it gives you a good idea here of just the general balance of the market. Uh, what is what's waiting to be filled here as well. But then you have your various, uh, the total size represented in the various uh, levels here as well. So if you change the symbol in one, take a look at the NQ here. Uh, GC is another really commonly traded one. You can see that total volume here. Uh, as well uh, and the balance of that and you'll notice that it was reflected in both the level 2 window as well as the uh, the Superdome itself and so that market depth data uh, is going to be uh, an extraordinarily useful thing for you uh, when adding it to uh, to a real-time subscription. 
And then uh, the uh, the one thing I wanted to focus on specifically is the news window. We talked about the news features of uh, the kinetic feed. So if we go to file, new, and then news here, uh, what we have is just a, a large number of a large number of news articles that are generated based on the data that we have available. Uh, it's going to be hard to filter through all uh, a thousand of these articles uh, and a lot of them probably aren't going to be relevant for my specific trading uh, and that's where the filter features of the news window here and this is where you would take advantage of that news data that's coming from the kinetic feed that's included with your basic service uh, here and what you would do is you would right click in the top left of the news window and you would select add filter uh, you can add filter terms based on uh, individual keywords. Like I said, you could do non-farm payroll if you specified non-farm. Um, and then the other thing you can do is you can add symbols direct from uh, instrument list. So if I'm looking for things related to a particular set of symbols that I, I want to view, uh, I can specify that as a keyword uh, or being the distinction. So it would look for any of these uh, there. And since this is a DAO 30, we can call this uh, D30 here or something like that and specify that. Once we've created that filter, we can from that news window filter drop down, select DAO 30. And what we see here is from Business Wire uh, an article related to Pfizer, which is uh, going to be relevant based on my, my filter that I've set up. Uh, I can review that specific. So we've taken that 1,000 article down based on that filter we created and made it into a more manageable more manageable uh, five articles and you can see here uh, the different uh, articles from RTT news included with the basic service business wire included uh, you can see other premium news services that I have uh, specifically that you can uh, choose to subscribe to but a lot of people find that these uh, basic news services are, are more than sufficient for anything that they're going to be doing uh, the other great thing about this news uh, window is if I right click and select add alert there I can go ahead and uh, create uh, something similar to what we did with the news window uh, filter and let's say I grab Dow 30 here as well uh, same same difference but I need to make sure and the main difference between this is when I go format the uh, alert we need to uh, right click here format the alert uh, the main thing here is we want to go ahead and add a sound file and so the setup of a, an alert versus filter is generally the same with the distinction being if you right click in the alert window select sound file you can add a sound what that does is if I go ahead and left click OK and then enable that alert I can put that off to the side and I would hear a sound um, either through my speakers or in my case headphones that would uh, enable me to you might uh, you then enable me to uh, hear that alert based on incoming news articles. So I don't even need to pay attention to the news window to make it relevant for my trading. I can just kind of sit off to the side anytime an article comes in. I can then go take a look at it based on that alert feature. Uh, and so that's a great way to go ahead and take advantage of that news data that's always streaming with Kinetic uh, and make it relevant for the type of trading that you do. Uh, and it, again, you can specify any keywords that you want. So whatever you're looking to trade, uh, it's going to be available with uh, with that as well. And uh, DH has a good point. You might allude to the dynamic dome can save hundreds of dollars a year uh, in TT. And uh, NinjaTrader does also offer the dynamic superdome. So if you go to file, new, and dynamic superdome here, uh, it's essentially a way of, uh, with the static superdome price ladder display being patented by trading technologies, uh, you can view the uh, distinction here between the dynamic where this price ladder display isn't patented and um, so there's not any uh, royalties or commissions involved uh, with the dynamic superdome. Uh, some brokers that work with NinjaTrader do cover the costs of the, uh, the TT credits. Um, how that works is broker specific um, and of course if you work with a TT based brokerage that, that may be something that's included um, there as well. You do have the option with a NinjaTrader of using the dynamic dome as a way of uh, not paying those trading technologies fees uh, if you choose not to, but a lot of people do really like the static superdome, a lot of people like the dynamic superdome, it's really just a personal preference uh, there as well. And so uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about here as it relates to um, the kinetic feed is how you would use it in tandem uh, with a brokerage feed. Uh, and so when you're live trading with NinjaTrader, if you go to file, first off, we're going to disconnect. 
uh, and so we're not connected to Kinetic at this point in time. Uh, what we are going to do is if you're live trading within NinjaTrader, uh, what you would want to do is connect to your broker's provided data. And so your broker is going to tr provide you, um, the distinction being that uh, your broker provides you with order routing ca capabilities. And that way when you place a trade with NinjaTrader, it's sent to the exchange and it's filled at the price that you want it filled based on uh, all the inner workings of the application. Uh, and so what we're going to do here to simulate this is go to file, we're going to select new, we're going to connect here, and then we're going to select here. Uh, one of our more commonly used uh, brokerage feeds is Zenfire here, uh, and we're going to connect to the Zenfire feed. Once we connect to the Zenfire feed, you can see that we also do get real-time data uh, as well for uh, live trading. Uh, but one of the things that you don't have access to uh, with with Zenfire data is the same amount of historical data. So one of the things you can do here is you can go to file, you can connect, and you can use Kinetic as your historical data feed here as well. Uh, and what that does is by connecting in this manner uh, within NinjaTrader is you have the ability to route orders uh, to your broker, but you're using the historical data that's available with Kinetic. And since Zenfire is only a futures-based broker, what you also have access to is symbols that aren't supported uh, by Zenfire. Specifically, if I want to switch away from, say, the ES0912, uh, a futures contract that Zenfire does support, we can uh, switch to Apple here. And we can see that we still get real-time data uh, for this particular stock symbol, even though Zenfire doesn't support it. Because the way NinjaTrader works is it relies on your primary feed for the data that's available. And then if that data is not available, uh, it, re it refers to the secondary feed. So whether that's historical data or real-time data from uh, symbols that or markets that aren't supported with your primary feed, NinjaTrader is going to automatically refer to that second feed there as well. The other benefit of this is taking advantage of the reliability aspects of the kinetic feed is if there's technical issues with the brokerage, if you know, and we'll simulate that just by going to file and disconnect and selecting Zenfire, you still have access to the real-time data through your secondary kinetic feed and we're still getting that real-time data. Uh, it's going to be a little easier to see here on uh, the dome in terms of that real-time data uh, because it is after hours. We're not seeing a, a huge amount of movement at this point in time. But uh, you are getting that real-time data with the, uh, the Zenfire feed. And now the other thing that you can do is you can go to uh, File, Connect, and then select the Zenfire feed. Um, because the NinjaTrader application is flexible in the sense that how you choose to connect is going to be merely a matter of preference. So I know a lot of people um, who want to rely on real-time tick data uh, will choose to use Kinetic as the primary feed, knowing that it's fully unfiltered data. Uh, and so you can use Kinetic here as the primary feed, but by connecting to your brokerage feed, the order routing capacities uh, within that feed are included within NinjaTrader. And so even though all of my data right now may be coming from Kinetic, I have the ability of selecting from the accounts drop down my brokerage account, and then my orders will be sent to the exchange, filled based on uh, what's available, uh, filled based on the uh, the broker specific uh, trades that are being placed. And so that's. Uh, how you can choose to use the kinetic feed in tandem with whatever data uh, your broker is providing you for uh, order execution and uh, a lot of times they they obviously need to make that real-time data for order execution um, but uh, they do include some of them historical data, but not all of them do include historical data. A uh, question in here uh, I just saw from uh, and GM Piero, uh, is what happens if I connect first to Kinetic and then to my broker, i.e. Uh, interactive brokers? Uh, oh, perfect. Uh, I did get that. And so, uh, yeah, the idea here is the flexibility of the Kinetic feed itself. And so um, now what I want to go ahead and do is go over the pricing options. You can kind of see uh, how Kinetic works here. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, refer back to my uh, slideshow here and, and talk about the pricing options of the Kinetic feed. Uh, if you were to go to the Kinetic uh, purchase page, what you would first see is the option for end of day data. If you select that option, you go ahead and are taken to a page where you can download NinjaTrader. Uh, but if you choose the subscribe option, what happens is you're taken to a page that has the uh, 
various components that are available with the uh, kinetic data uh, backed, uh, displayed and broken down here. Uh, basic service is pre-selected on the purchase page, so you don't need to worry about selecting that. That's the base cost of Kinetic at $50 per month. It includes everything that we've talked about here previously, uh, just to reiterate the market metrics, the historical data, uh, as well as the real-time news. And that's available uh, there as well. When you, uh, when you do want to include other items, what you can do is select optional upgrades. Um, that market depth that was available in the Superdome, you can add uh, to your account. But then there's also the premium news feeds that are available here as well uh, that you can add to your account. If you're a big time news trader, uh, you can include these, uh, these news feeds here as well. But then uh, the real meat of the purchase page is based on the exchanges that you want to receive data for. And so going back earlier, a uh, question about Forex data, basic service you have included is for the historical data. But what you see is the option to add real-time Forex data as well as institutional data as a, as a premium. There's a clarification on that, the basic being Forex data from FXCM, the premium being FXCM as well as 10.4, the 10.4 data specifically, uh, including composite symbols, regional banks providing uh, specific quotes uh, for Forex data. But then you see a list of all of the stocks and futures exchanges that are available to you. It's broken down based on the domestic exchanges. Uh, looking at this, the domestic exchanges are specified, but then there's the international exchanges uh, that are available as well. And so you can see the large number of international exchanges in addition to the domestic exchanges. Now, if you're going to be participating in the waiver program, and I have a question here, um, there as well uh, from uh, Jim Piero, and I'll actually come back to that since it deals with ICE data. Um, and one thing you may notice is the ICE isn't listed on this uh, this particular page uh, as a uh, and as an exchange. But uh, what we have, if you wanted to participate in the waiver program, is say you select the CME exchange by including that, you would then get the option to participate in the CME. Uh, exchange fee waiver program, when you select that option, uh, what's going to happen is you then validate the connection. Uh, what this looks like uh, within NinjaTrader there as, as uh, and, and I'll show you here, and this is, has to do with how you configure the connection. Uh, what this looks like is going back to uh, the kinetic purchase page, uh, you see the, uh, the first aspect, we select subscribe here, and what we have is the full page. Uh, right now, if I were to go ahead and uh, just basic service and then select the CME exchange, I now get that option to participate in the CME group globex waiver program. Once I do that, I check it, I select next. Once I select next, there's uh, some questions on your professional status. The next page is just exchange agreements. Um, these are based on the historical data that comes with every single subscription. Uh, and so they come from the, the NYSC and the NASDAQ specifically. All you need to do is agree based on where you see these action items and put the information specified. And then the last page is billing information. So if you were then to go get that billing information, once you complete the subscription, uh, you're sent an automated email uh, basically that includes uh, your account ID and password. And how that works is if we pull up the control center, uh, if we go ahead and disconnect from uh, both Zenfire and disconnect from Kinetic, with that account con connection information, what we can do is go to tools, we can go to account connections, and then we can add the, the, uh, the Kinetic connection we would go ahead and create a new connection and this is where we would specify we can call this um, kinetic test or uh, anything you really want can be used here as your name uh, we would want to make sure we select kinetic as our provider and then we select and I uh, forgot to put the test there and so uh, once we specify and make the distinction between a connection I already have we can put in uh, the account number these are typically 411 you know 502 or whatever um, it's going to be a six digit number want to make sure that we have six digit numbers there as your account ID and then you would put in uh, whatever password is provided to you when you sign up and, and this can be anything that you want and I don't happen to have a uh, password but you just put in the number the digits here you see the use back adjusted data if you had a live license within NinjaTrader, you'd see the ability to select this option. Since I'm just using the free edition license here, um, that option's not available. But this is where you, when creating the connection, if you want to participate in the waiver, is how you would validate the data. Um, and you would validate that waiver program, then we select next and finish. And then if we were to uh, 
connect to both the kinetic feed, and I don't want to connect to kinetic test because it's not a real connection. If we were then to connect to kinetic, and then whatever our brokerage provider is, whether it's Zenfire first and then kinetic, or kinetic then Zenfire, we would ultimately get the we would ultimately uh, validate the waiver at that point. And that would be shown here in the log file uh, of NinjaTrader. It would show that uh, that validation there uh, as well. Go ahead and uh, disconnect, and that actually. And uh, getting back to the uh, the final page here, uh, that actually covers everything that I wanted to go over here. So there are some questions uh, that I did want to answer. If anyone has any questions that maybe I haven't answered yet, uh, go ahead and put those in the room, and I'll go ahead and uh, work through those here uh, as well. And what we see here is uh, GM Piero, uh, where is the TF traded? Uh, the TF is traded on the uh, NIBA ICE Futures Exchange. Uh, what we offer with Kinetic is historical data only. Um, there's not delayed data or real-time data available for the TF. And that has to do with changes that were made at the ICE Exchange. Um, we're working with them to be able to uh, continue to offer that uh, going forward. But currently, uh, we don't have access to that real-time or delayed data. But historical data is available there uh, as well as part of the basic service. Um, and so if you're trading the TF through your broker, you can get that real-time data and then use Kinetic as your supplementary feed for the historical data. And is the option for NASDAQ level two data independent of the exchange feed options uh, listed lower on your purchase page? If you can speak the difference between the NASDAQ choices, uh, as I'm considering using this feed for stock trading with NinjaTrader 7. Um, as it relates to the to the equities options, uh, getting back, let's go ahead and just go back to our purchase page. Uh, the main one, we want to go ahead and get back to our purchase page. So the level two data is dependent on your having access to level one data, uh, as well as just general market depth. So if you wanted to access the uh, level two data, what you would ha see happen is if you just select the NASDAQ level, uh, the NASDAQ open view for your level two, what's going to happen is you're going to get a message saying NASDAQ level one is required as well as market depth. And it automatically selects the market depth option for you as well as the NASDAQ level one. If there are dependencies based on the data, uh, you would be alerted to those dependencies. So like if I wanted to select the Eurex exchange, I get a message saying I need to add the international real-time exchange there as well. Any dependencies that are necessary for whatever exchange that you want level two data for, uh, in the case of the NASDAQ, would be automatically selected so that you have access to the uh, primary level one data first, and then the market depth data that comes with Kinetic, uh, generally speaking, and then specifically the data from the NASDAQ exchange based on their open view exchange there. And so, uh, John, thanks for that question uh, there as well. And John, why is the waiver offered? Uh, John, it has to do with the CME exchanges. They made the decision to provide data to individuals who can demonstrate their ability to execute trades with the exchange. Uh, I, I imagine from their perspective, if they can get people the data they need uh, based on their ability to trade, uh, they get more people generally trading, and uh, the net benefit for them is, is in that respect. Uh, and so. So uh, a lot of people do trade those particular symbols, uh, get more people involved uh, with the exchange uh, there as well. It also increases liquidity of the markets, that type of thing, uh, by making the data more available uh, for individuals who can trade uh, those exchanges. Uh, you have a uh, larger uh, pool of, of traders. Uh, there and that's why uh, I believe they did it. But uh, specifically, I don't have a, I don't have a, a detailed understanding of their their reasoning behind it. But uh, the benefit for you is that you can get that data three hundred four dollars worth uh, at no additional cost when you subscribe to the kinetic data. And then uh, Aslam, is it possible to connect to the feed automatically? Do we have to manually connect? Uh, connect uh, pulling up the NinjaTrader application when we create a connection. If we go to Tools, Account Connections, and we'll just edit the one we made. We'll go to Kinetic Test Change. There's an option in NinjaTrader to connect on startup. If you enabled that option, what would happen is when you close and then reopen NinjaTrader, it'll automatically go through the steps to connect. So you don't have to go to File, Connect, and then choose the, the connection. It's predefined here as to connect when you open NinjaTrader. Uh, and that's actually a setting that's included with every single connection uh, that you can create uh, here. And so you'd want to just enable that uh, when you are creating the uh, Kinetic connection. Or you can edit your connection as it's already available. 
And then uh, came in late, sorry, uh, it's covered. I'm anticipating opening a Forex account with FXCM. If so, the data comes from Kinetic, correct? Um, no, FXCM would provide you a uh, fee that would be available for order routing uh, specifically. If you're just looking at Forex data that's independent of brokerage data, FXCM is the provider of basic Forex. Um, the, the distinction between being the FXCM data that's available with NinjaTrader uh, doesn't include uh, that the broker provides you versus what's available with Kinetic. It doesn't include the same amount of historical data uh, that you would get. And there's also other um, in, in limitations uh, as it relates to the FXCM uh, brokerage connection versus what's available uh, with Kinetic. So uh, there's a benefit to supplementing whatever data is available directly from FXCM for order routing uh, for your trading uh, and then supplementing that with the FXCM data uh, that's available for historical purposes as well as real time uh, specifically from FXCM as part of the basic uh, Forex package. And then uh, Aslam there, uh, it looks like uh, I got your, your question. And based on that, it looks like I was able to uh, answer everyone's questions uh, there. Uh, if I missed one uh, earlier in the uh, session, go ahead and put it in the room. Otherwise, uh, I want to thank everyone for joining me here today. I want to thank uh, Big Mike for giving me this opportunity uh, to uh, talk about the kinetic data feed and how it works with integrated benefits to you, uh, specifically as it relates to the speed, the optimization, and the amount of historical data that's available, uh, as well as the affordability of it, those being the, uh, the primary benefits. Uh, that being the case, uh, any other questions you have, you can send to support at kinetic.com. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, answer any of your questions, get back to you uh, as quickly as possible, usually within a matter of minutes. So again, thanks everyone. I appreciate your time. I hope you have a, a great day. Um, and happy trading tomorrow. All right. Thank you very much, Ryan. So if anybody has further questions, it's uh, support at kinetic.com. And I will post the recording for this webinar sometime tomorrow. And uh, you can always watch it again if you want to go over all the information that was covered. So thanks again, Ryan. Hope everybody has a good day, and I'll see everybody on the forum.